set. And uh, how are we coming through, okay? Yeah, we sound great. Okay, perfect. Well, let's go ahead and get started. First of all, I'd like to second James's welcome to everybody today. It's so exciting to have you here. And we're going to talk about uh, a topic that we around our organization really struggle with all the time. And I'm sure that you probably once in a while do as well if you are in the process of scanning your photos. And that's how do you keep your work environment clean and your scanner clean so that you don't get those kinds of photographs that you aren't looking for with all sorts of extraneous types of little particles and particulate matter on them. So we're going to dive into this today and see what we can do. Um, around our office, we have the cleanliness is next to godliness and the road to hell is paved with the dirty scanning area. So um, we've kind of got that motto around our office and we're going to use kind of a philosophy of how do we go through this whole process and tackle this. As James said, my name is Rick Lippert. And I am with Easy Photo Scan, and we want to thank the folks from Apo and Kodak Alaris for making this possible, and for us the opportunity to present this to you. You can find me at the uh, email address that's there on the screen, or you can call us as well, toll free at that number there, that 866 number. So let's go ahead and get started. When we look at the process of keeping our scanner clean, what we're really thinking about is five different areas or five different environments and, and sections of our scanning process. And we're going to touch base on all five of them today. Um, two of them actually have to do with your workspace, and then three of them have to do specifically with the scanner. Now, I've got the webcam on today, so for those of you who are seeing this live, you'll get to see some actual hands-on uh, demonstrations. Um, I have images as well for those that are going to be on the recording. So we'll dive right into it. First of all, you've got to have this mentality of you're doing combat. This is not something that you just do once and you're done with it. You can't go, oh, all done and clean, because I will tell you right now, that is a just cruising for a bruising because what will happen is the air around you, your work is space, the things that you introduce when you're working, all of those things have an impact and can dirty up the environment. So we've got to think of this as a warrior mentality, something that we're going to go and attack. And it's something that we want to think about. And we've tried to make it simple with five basic areas. First of all, we're going to look at our ambient environment. Those are the things that are around us that when you think about it, they kind of control the barrier to where we are and to where our workspace is. So we're going to talk about that. Then we're going to talk about the work area itself, where you're actually doing the scanning. Then we're going to speak about inside your scanner. And although there are a number of different types of scanners, and, and you may have a different type, we're going to use the Kodak Picture Saver scanner as our example here. But these things will apply to any scanner if you're using one that has an auto document and auto feed feature, or if we talk about a flatbed scanner. So we're going to be talking about all of those. So it doesn't mean that you have to have a Kodak Picture Saver scanner or any of those systems. All of these things are going to work. We're going to talk about cleaning glass. That is a very important factor, especially because our scanners have a glass platen. And then finally, we're going to talk about something that's unique to scanning in the Kodak Picture Saver scanner environment, as well as unique from the standpoint of um, slide scanning if you had an open imaging area there as well, which some of the older slide scanners did. So that's our, that's our uh, presentation and how we're going to organize it today. So let's get started. And I'd like to start with this quote. And back in the early 70s, when the environment was something that was brand new, and the whole idea of that concept of environmental protection was coming to light. We came up with a saying that has kind of stuck in society, and it was from a little cartoon that was called Pogo. And uh, the cartoon, you can find it out on the internet, or perhaps some of you remember it. It was uh, Pogo, they're walking through the woods, and they were talking about going through, and then they come across all this junk in the woods. And, they, and Pogo says, we have met the enemy, and he is us. 
Well, I'd like to start this by saying we have met the enemy when it comes to photo scanning, and, the, and he is dust. Dust. This is the one thing we'll be talking about, and we've got some interesting facts about dust, and I'm going to share those with you as long as well as some other things. Now, dust has with it a couple of other enemies that we like to talk about in our environment here when we're scanning, and that is the foes that you need to take on in order to keep your photo scanning clean and producing great looking photos. So let's take a look at these and see. There's three of them. The first one is oil. Now, I'm not talking about the kinds of oil that you would find in, in a can of oil. I'm talking about the oil that is on your skin, the oils that we use to protect ourselves and to lubricate our exterior portion of our bodies. And that has a way to be transferred in and around and on. So we're going to have to fight that foe of oil to help keep those pictures looking great. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to fight dust. And we're going to fight dust in a whole bunch of different ways. And we'll be talking about that as we go through. And then finally, we're going to be looking at particulates. Now, particulates, as you'll see in a few minutes, can you could think of dust as a particulate, but I like to personally, when we talk about photo scanning, look at particulates in its own in its own environment in its own category. So let's take a look at these a little closer. First of all, we've got this oil on our skin, and our outer layer of our skin is comprised entirely of dead cells and oil. Okay. It's called the stratum corneum, and it protects this living stuff that lives underneath all these dead cells, and it lubricates it and traps in the moisture and keeps us from drying out. So oil is a good thing. However, oil can also cause all sorts of challenges because if you've ever taken your your smartphone and you've touched the screen, you can see how quickly that oil transfers onto that glass screen. Well, just imagine every time you touch that, you're going through and you're, as you're touching it, you're leaving that deposit of oil. The next is dust. Now, dust is in our homes, in our offices, and they contain all sorts of small components, very small, different, different measures of microns, okay? And they can go anywhere from uh, you know, 0.1 thousandth of a micron on up. And they can contain all sorts of different things that get caught up in the wind. I know it's springtime, and I can tell you right now here in Florida, the pollen is absolutely going crazy. I've also been up in the mid uh, the uh, mid portion of the eastern seaboard, and I know that that pollen can go crazy there as well about this time of the year. But there's other things. There's the dead skin that's falling off of us. We replace our outer cells quite frequently, and so they're always flaking off. That's why when they do search and rescue types of things, they can actually smell your skin in the trail because you're leaving that skin everywhere. In addition to that, there's particles that are blown across. I know we're in the actual Sahara Desert particle pattern or dust pattern as it blows across the Atlantic Ocean and catches up into the trade winds and gets into cross Florida. There's also things like meteorites. You've seen these shooting stars that come out at night and you go, oh, how wonderful. Well, those actually burst and melt and break up and actually create meteorite dust or particles. So you're going to find all sorts of types of different things, and a lot of them where you live may be unique to your area. And finally, we're going to talk about particulates. Now, particulate, and I like to think of it as particulate debris, these are complex mixtures of things. And they can be finely sized, um, and they can be made out of all sorts of types of things like solids, liquids, uh, plasma matter, any kind of uh, type of matter, actually. And, um, they may have different densities. And so I like to think of those types of things as particulates, not so much as dust, because they can take on so many different forms. Forms. So let's dive into our ambient and our working area and get started looking at that first. Now, we talked about oil. And oil uh, 
is in our skin, and that's the part we're going to kind of attract to here in this presentation. And there's two types of our secreting glands in our skin, the apocrine and the eccrine. And we have both these Eccrine glands are the ones that are coiled up and they vary in size. And they can expel up to two cups of waste materials in the form of salt and urea every single day. Now let me say that again. Two cups. So here's my uh, coffee mug, um, about eight ounces, right? Two of these every single day. And where will you find the most number of these kinds of cells? In your palms and in the soles of your feet. So here we are having number one enemy, oil, and it's right there where we touch everything. Now we can understand why that's important as it helps lubricate all the skin and keep some moisture and this type of thing, but it can become an enemy for us when we get into involved with dealing with photographs and keeping our pictures looking good. So how do we protect that? Well, the first thing is to wash your hands. Now, I want to make sure that we talk about washing hands from a standpoint of washing hands before you do a job and before you touch everything. Um, that's a very important process around our offices. Um, and you want to make sure that you're using a soap that isn't going to leave any kind of residue on your hands. Now, a lot of people go, oh, yeah, well, I just use that um, material that that kills those bacteria killers right and uh, depending on the on the brand you know you can buy them in big jugs and we have them around the office as well or I have wipes that are disinfectants and they'll kill the germs on my hands that's great but we're not talking about those kinds of washing hands because Actually, that type of material that is fighting the bacteria is going to leave a resin on your hands or a, 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 a microscopic residual. And you want to actually use soap and water, just good old plain soap and water. And you want to use friction to help you to get your hands clean. The next is, once you've got your hands clean, find a set, and I've got some right here, so uh, find a set of photo handling gloves and wear them. Now, I know people go, well, they're awful clunky, and I will tell you they are a little bit clunky, but once you find them, now we happen to work with ones that are fitted, so we feel a little bit more comfortable with that, and they have a little texture in the fingertips to help us just a little bit. You can also use those nitrile types of gloves. We don't like them, and I'll tell you why. The reason we don't like them is that your hands, they don't really cause a barrier. Your hands are still going to get oily, and they're going to get sweaty, and that Nitrile has a tendency, because it's a kind of a plastic type base, it will, it will have a tendency to hold that moisture in. So you take these off and your hands are just wringing wet. And we don't like that type of feeling and it's very uncomfortable. So we like these cotton types of gloves. But find them and use them and keep them clean. Now these we keep clean by using a hand wash once we've used them a few times and they start to show a little bit of wear, we can go ahead and just rewash these because these are really sturdy. Some of the other ones are a little bit more disposable. You pay less for them, but then you would have to uh, replace them with a new pair. So use gloves and wash your hands. Number one, all right? The second is that second enemy that we talked about was dust. Now there are thousands of different kinds of contaminants that affect us every single day. And as we said, some can be microscopic or not visible at all. And some can go all the way up to seeing you you can see the dust laying on the counter or it can accumulate to build up to be dust. Now we like to categorize dust into two classifications. We call them the sticky dust and we talk about the sticky dust and we talk about the dry dust. Now when we talk about dry dust, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the type of thing that just floats in, sets down, and can easily respond to being blown off or wiped off. Sticky dust a little different. Sticky dust takes on like a viscosity to it and will stick no matter what. And I think you've seen it. You've you, you wipe something and it goes over to one end, and you wipe it and it goes over to the other, or it doesn't move at all. We think of that as sticky dust, and that has a clinging nature to it. And that clinging nature is 
due to static electricity. There's a charge on the surface, and you get a negatively charged ion type of situation, and they'll sit there and make it really, really hard for the dust to move. So we call that sticky dust. Now, the average home in the United States, and we all like to think that probably our country is relatively clean. It's not a third world country. We, most of us have solid barriers to the outdoors, so we have solid windows and doors and this type of thing. But the average home in the U.S. has up to 40 pounds of dust a year in it. If you were to take and collect all the dust in your house, there's actually a formula. You can jump out on the internet and it will show you how to do it. I did it. It was actually a scary number of how many little fragments of dust can be in one cube container. It's a little test. You take a one centimeter by one centimeter box and you leave it out for one minute and then you count the little dust particles in there. And I would just leave it to you. It's a lot of dust. So you can try that as well. So how do we fight this? Well, the first thing we want to do is in our environment in the United States, most of our offices, most of our homes are in somewhat of a sealed type of environment, meaning that we're bringing air, we're conditioning that air through an air handler, and so we want to attack it first on the outside. We want to go on the outside. So we need to use filters. Now, there's different kinds of filters, right? There's all sorts of different ones, but you want to find a filter that will actually bring through and not allow the micron size to float through and then be propelled, literally projected through the vents in your duct system. So you want to use something that's fine and will filter out most of the standard size of the filters are a standard size of dust. Now you can see, you can go down and you can buy your filters at the dollar store. Now I don't have anything about the dollar store. I love it. But when you go buy the filter at the dollar store, I can tell you that if you look at it and you see all the way through that filter, well, that's just going to allow things to just pass right through, right? So that's one thing you want to think about is it's filtering size. The next is the vents in the duct work, right? So we have a little brush that we go around and we actually once a month clean all the vents in our office area because what does pass through and get in the duct work can then wind up collecting around those little fins where they direct the air through the, through the duct system and bingo, you wind up in a situation. Now the force of air comes across and maybe it's been filtered and it's okay, but now it's collecting there and some of that sticky dust and it's just enough to throw it out and knock it loose and then you get it airborne and then you have to contend with that. And finally, there's a third way and we like to use this way a lot in bigger areas and try to protect our workspace a little bit more confined by using an ionizer. Now the ionizer works. You can buy different ones for different sizes and this type of thing, but the ionizer actually brings the air through. It's a second filtration system and puts it onto negatively charged plates, metal plates, and you literally pull the plate out and you're going to wind up wiping off the dust. You can actually see it. It will actually collect on these plates. and it's statically charged so that it will hang on to it, and then you can wipe them and keep it clean. And you can keep your workspace. So we like to keep one of those ionizers near our workspace so that it will get any kind of dust that we haven't controlled through our environment the, the other way, right? So let's talk a little bit about particle debris, because in the same genre of protecting dust, You'll see some big stuff get in the air as well, those big visible pieces. And your filtration and cleaning your filter or cleaning your uh, ductwork and making sure that you got the ionizer, all that can work. But you also have a different kind of issue with particle debris. And I will call this the junk that comes along with the photos that you get. So the client walks in and they, you pulled your box out of the closet and you open it up, you go, wow, what a great collection, and you 
agree on what you want to do for the job and you get it all set up and now it's your time, you put your gloves, your working space is clean, you get your gloves on and you're all set to go and you look down and there's like a dead cockroach or a couple of dead cockroaches or there's little broken pieces or there's staple edges and there's just it, it particulate matter. This is not necessarily dust, right? This is stuff that's just collected over the years because that box has been sitting in the corner and who knows from the shelf or how it was or what it was done before. You get all this garbage and, and you get little shards of paper. So what we like to do is when we attack the particulate matter, we actually have a couple of tools that we use. And the first one is um, we always will bring everything out onto this um, little terry cloth type of thing. It's a microfiber cloth, but it's much bigger. We also have a particle debris so you can wipe things down. But probably our best candidate for getting rid of particles and debris is this device right here, or there's another one called the Hurricane as well. These are canless. In other words, they, they are not under pressure. You actually, in this one, you plug it in and you can blow it. And we actually take our photos out and we'll blow them out. Now, they have different tips that you can uh, put on and off of them to change the flow of the air. And we'll actually blow things off before we get started and try to protect us from getting that particulate matter. Because you can get a little uh, dust feather or glitter. We've seen glitter and all sorts of things. And you get all that off before you get started. And boy, you're already going and you're ready to. You, you got a greater start in keeping your whole working environment clean and getting better pictures. And finally, we use a camel hair brush. We have a fairly large size one that we can get in and work with as well to get that particulate matter out. So try to think of as you as you work in your environment, we keep the whole barrier as clean as we can and work with our filters and then we move on in and we work in to the inside area where we're actually working to finally the material itself and try to get rid of that particulate matter before you get started. So We've attacked the oil, we've attacked the dust, we've attacked the particulate debris. Congratulations, you've kind of got everything checked off in the work and the ambient area that we've talked about as far as being one of our five areas to focus on. So let's do this. Let's now turn around and focus on the next area that the photographs when you're scanning are going to touch. Now that may be either your flatbed scanner or it could be your automatic document picture feeder scanner. Either one. We focused on this presentation because it's a little more complex to clean the, the photo scanners that are auto-fed. However, Many of the things that we talk about will apply to your flatbed scanner. One caveat and kind of something, just a little order of business to make sure that I say this now, you'll want to follow the manufacturer's recommendations for the materials and the items that you use to clean your scanner. The ones I'm going to show are the ones that we are comfortable with sharing with you on how to clean the Kodak Picture Saver Scanner. There may be some other things that are a little bit more useful depending on the brand and the manufacturer of your scanner. So let's look at some of the additional supplies that we have hanging around our office. And I actually have some of them here. The first one is a... Um, roller cleaning pad. Now these roller cleaning pads are special because you never want to put alcohol or uh, alcohol material on the rollers because it will actually dry them out, cause them to crack and prematurely deteriorate. So you use something like this that's designed specifically for cleaning rollers and making sure that you don't degradate the, the interaction uh, by their interaction with the actual uh, rubber material that the rollers are made of. The next is a transport cleaning sheet. And these are the greatest things. And these are available. You could use them on any type of scanner that uses automatic document feed. And we'll show a little bit more about these in just a minute. But they're literally, and I wanted to just for those of you that are here, they're literally a clean white sheet of paper that has tacky on it that almost feels like it was a post-it note. And we'll share about that in just a minute. There's some other things that we use as well, and that is microfiber cloths. Now, we use several different kinds of microfiber cloths. Um, we love this one. Now, this one is a, 
about 15 by 15 inches. We get them at Target in the automotive part because they're actually next to all the chamois that you would you know, clean your Jaguar or your Mercedes Benz or BMW with. And this is a really fine microfiber uh, or, or, it, it, cloth. And it, it's got both sides. We love it because of its size, and you can get a lot of wiped out. But also, the same kind of microfiber cloth that you would use if you were cleaning glass glasses or any kind of fine glassware, this, this type of cloth. We like to get them a little bit bigger. The ones that we usually buy are about uh, 6 inches by 6 inches in size. All right, along with that, you also have that camel hair brush we talked about, and this little device here, and this device is called the lens pen. It has two components to it. The first is a brush, so this is like a camel hair brush that you can actually use, so you, it saves us a lot of time and energy for not having to go back and get our brush. It's always there with us. And the other is a cap, and you can get them in different dimensions, that actually was designed to clean the or the, the actual imaging device of a digital camera, okay? But it works so fantastic on glass. And so because our glass platens, our closed, our closed scanning imaging areas are, made, are covered with a glass, this works great. And we'll show you a little bit more about that in just a moment. Okay. So let's move on a little bit and talk about how you clean your scanner. And no matter what manufacturer of your scanner, oh goodness, I need to jump back. There is two other things I forgot in our presentation about this, and we'll show it to you now. I've got brilliantizer pads. Brilliantizer pads are fantastic for all sorts of uh, electronics. It's a two-pad pack. It has a red, which is for wet, and a second one that is a dry. And you open this up, the wet one, and you can clean the area, and then you use the dry one. And it works like a microfiber cloth and will help to make sure that the glass is absolutely streakless. It also works great on your cell phone, by the way. To save money, we actually have a small little Tupperware device, or we'll use these small baggies, and we'll, we'll when we're using the scanning for the day, we'll actually open one of these up, we'll use it, and then we'll close it into a very small little area, and then it will retain its moisture because it doesn't escape into the air. And so we can use it over and over and over again. And then the dry one we keep as well in a baggie that is nice and clean so that we know it's dry and wet. The only thing I would tell you is a little bit of advice from the presentation um, for a tip is make sure you write with a magic marker which is dry and which one is wet. And the other thing that we're showing, and we'll show you how to use this in just a few minutes, is painter's tape. And I won't say any more about that until a few more minutes. All right, so the first thing you want to do when you have a scanner, no matter whose scanner it is and who manufactured it, you need to understand a little bit about that scanner from the standpoint of not that it's using for digital, uh, digitizing photographs, but from the standpoint of just how it's constructed, how it's put together. And there is actually a lot of times we get, well, how, I've never opened my scanner before. Well, you need to find out how you open it, whether it's your flatbed or not. You need to find out if you have a flatbed. Does, does the lid of that flatbed lift up and off like it does on the Kodak scanners? Many manufacturers are making that feature, and it's an awesome feature so that you can get in there really clean and not fighting against that back or the, excuse me, <coughs> cover. Of the, of the flatbed as you're trying to clean. So makes it much easier to work with. The same way with your photo scanner, you need, if you have one that is auto-fed, you need to make sure that you understand how to open it for the Kodak one. That's just place your hand over the LED part, reach down and you'll see your hands will automatically fall upon a lever that you pull and the scanner will open up. Now, when you open it up, there is a whole anatomy of scanners. Now, I won't go into all of them, but I will show you a couple of things that I think that are kind of important for us. The first is we want to make sure that we understand where the photos travel through. Okay, So that's your imaging path. That's the path that we're going to want to keep clean. 
Although it's important to keep the other extraneous parts, and we always want to wipe the outside of the scanner and this stuff, it's the inside that we want to worry about when we're keeping our scanners clean. And we want to look at it from a standpoint of the transport rollers, the pickup rollers, and the separation rollers. And we'll talk a little bit more of that in just a moment. There's three different distinct ones. In the Kodak Picture Saver scanners, those transport rollers are the rollers that are the red ones. They're the, they're the rubberized. They're unique in the industry. And as much as that the Kodak scanner has all rubberized rollers, there's no hard plastics or anything like that on them. And they'll make the pathway safe and, and um, allow the picture to flow through the scanner's imaging path in a gentle manner. So those rollers, we want to work on cleaning them. Okay? We also want to work on cleaning the feed rollers. Those are the ones that have the power to them. They're actually forcing the picture into the scanner. And then also the separation rollers. And those are the ones that are picking the pictures up if you've got them stacked individually and separating them and placing them in and basically gently feeding them to the feeder roller that then sends it through and takes it on through the transport path. The other part we want to think about is on the Kodak Picture Saver Scanner, they're offset. We have two imaging devices, one that's on the back side, and it's a closed imaging area, and then one that's on the front side, or the, when you open it up like that uh, clamshell, it's the part that moves and opens for you, and that's the opening imaging area. Now, other scanners and built from the document component or manufacturers that kind of have a document mentality, they'll put another glass imaging uh, area there for you. And that closed imaging area can pick up streaks and that type of thing. And so that's what's nice about having an open imaging area, but it also has some challenges as well. And we'll talk about those in just a moment. So what do you need to have? To, to do first when you're cleaning your scanner and you open it up, the first thing I ask all of our team to do is to blow, wipe, and brush. And the reason I do that is because, first of all, blowing is going to remove all the dry dust. It's going to get everything out of it. Now, I don't want you to blow if you're using a can that has compressed air in it. And the reason why is that has a propellant. And that propellant actually leaves a film. And you've seen that before. And it can actually freeze up. You see that little freeze on the area where you scan maybe on your key, or you're blown it on your keyboard and it turns white and bubbles up, OK? That propellant can actually interact with the air and leave a film. So we don't want that. But we want these room canisters that pick up room air and drive them out with a electrical force. So I, bl I blow first, and that gets all the dry dust out. Now I'm going to take our microfiber cloth, and I'm going to wipe. And I'm going to wipe it out gently inside. But that's going to help pick up some of the sticky stuff. And if it still doesn't look clean, we can go and we can take our brush and clean just the area there and try to get all that stubborn, sticky dust off. So that's the first thing. You want to blow, you want to wipe, and you want to brush. When I do a flatbed, it's the very same thing. We blow our flatbeds. Then we're going to wipe, and then we want to dust. Now, dusting is very important on a flatbed because what you want to do is with your brush, you want to get those corners because that particulate matter, if all you're doing is just moving it from one side to the other, you're not really helping yourself in cleaning your scanner when you're working on a flatbed. So you actually want to get that and clean out those corners and make sure that you're not just pushing stuff up into a corner that can break loose and ultimately get onto your uh, image when you're scanning it. So the next thing we want to do is we want to work, first of all, at least this is how we work and we recommend, is you work on those transfer rollers. So you're going to work on that set of rollers that aren't the feeding rollers or the separation rollers, but the ones that actually transport the picture once it's inside the scanner. They're usually not able to be picked up in a document type of scanner. If you were scanning them, they'd be a hard plastic. They're usually white. In the Kodak picture saver scanner, they're the red ones. And you'll want to clean each one. You want to use something like this roller cleaning pad that has uh, just the right amount of liquid in it, small little cleaning agent, and a non-ionic water that they use. And you can clean each one. They're flat, typically, so they'll clean really well. And you want to roll them and 
clean, roll and clean, roll and clean, okay? And usually you can do about a quarter of a turn and then you can go again. So that's a real simple process there. The next thing that we want to do, and we're, when we talk about it, we're talking about the red rollers there. The next thing we want to do is we want to focus our attention on the separation module. Now the Kodak Picture Saver Scanner has two types of separation modules and you can tell the difference. One has a blue hub and one has a black or a gray type of looking hub. So you've got these two. The one that is designed for documents, and this works as well if you're cleaning your documents scanner, this works the same way. The way you want to do that is you want to remove this. It'll pop out and you'll hear a little pop and you want to use both hands when you do it. And you want to get in here and you want to get to this roller mechanism and get these nice and clean. And I'm going to hold it up to the camera and, and you can see here, you should hopefully be able to see some ridges. There we go. We're going to focus in. Sound came in. There we go. See some ridges. Now that ridge is to help get grip on the emulsion in the paper as it f feeds through the scanner. But the ridge can also harbor all sorts of the little valley part of the ridge can harbor all sorts of little debris, dust, all sorts of things that come on the pictures, even if you have a nice, clean working environment. So you want to get those nice and clean, and you use the same ruler cleaning pad. I actually, if they're really kind of dirty, if we've been doing a big event, I'll actually take like a toothbrush and put it up around here so that the bristles so I can get up inside there a little bit more. You don't want to put a lot of pressure on it. It doesn't take a lot, but they'll clean up really nice. So you want to clean this very well. There is another part to this, and let me see, we'll talk about it in a few moments, but I'll show you now. The photo handling separation module, the one designed specifically for photos, has much less tension, a special clutch to it. Uh, you'll notice in the documents, we hit the document. So if you've ever put paper, regular paper, and had this module in it, and it doesn't want to feed very well, that's because it's not hitting it hard enough. It's not banging on it hard enough because standard 20-pound paper, you want to hit harder than you would, say, a delicate treasured document on tissue paper or a photograph like the emulsion and leave marker rollers on it or mark, uh, mark uh, your rollers on it. But the uh, document scanner has two hinges to it as opposed to the single hinge here, or single spring on this one. And it also has a different kind of clutch. And we use a paper separation module. So this little paper separation module. It's a piece of plastic and it will wear out over time and you can actually buy these and replace them. In the photo scanner, we typically don't use them. You can, if you're having problems with certain kinds of photos, insert it and you can remove it as well. But for documents, it's kind of really important that you have that separation module there. Okay. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at where that separation module is. You access that separation module on most scanners by opening the clamshell and it's right down on the clamshell, right in the middle. And you can lift them up. Different manufacturers, they're, they're, man, they're put together and engineered a little different way, but this one just literally pops up and, and you, then you can replace them or use, use uh, specific ones for specific situ situations. Now we want to move to the back side in the fixed base of that scanner and we want to look at the actual rollers that feed. So these are the driving rollers. They're on the back side and there's a little lip that you can just pull right down, a little plastic cover you can pull down and you can get full access to them. You can actually if they're kind of really dirty and we always pull them out and I'll tell you why in just a minute because what will happen is you'll you'll want to clean them and get to them and it's a little easier if they're right there in your hand and clean but also all sorts of little dust and particulate matter can find themselves up when they're being driven through those roller set and find them into the cavity that actually harbors those photo uh, those um, rollers. So it's nice to get in there and then you can get your blower and blow that out or take something and wipe it out and that just works out really good to get that any kind of particulate matter. So it keeps it from 
banging loose and getting on your pictures and ruining something in image quality wise that you wouldn't necessarily go, well, I cleaned it. And, and we always like, oh, I cleaned it. Well, did you clean the back sides and the feeder roller section? Again, the feeder roller section is in the back where the feed tray is and you follow it down and that's the part that's actually mechanized that will roll the pictures through the scanner. Now, the next area that we're going to focus on here is we're going to focus on the glass platen or the glass covered area for imaging area. So the glass platen when you're using a, a flatbed, the glass imaging area when you're using either a document scanner, and you'll have two of them, or in the Kodak Picture Saver scanner, you'll have one. And we use two devices. We've already talked about them. This is the best device. Um, I do recommend that if you do open these up, because you buy them, you can buy them in all sorts of different packs. If you do open them up, have your cell phone out and all sorts of things you want to clean as well. We go and clean our computer monitors and the whole nine yards. We try to get our maximum value of these things. The second is the opening imaging area, and you're going to use a couple of different tools there. You're going to actually use uh, some sort of plastic card, a credit card will do, or something like that. You'll also use your microfiber cloths and you'll also use your blower, and we'll talk about that in just a few moments. All right, so as we move through this, uh, well, let's go back and actually, I guess, cover this right now. Um, the glass platen. The glass platen, so what have we already done? We've already blown, wiped, and brushed. So if we're on our flatbed and we've brushed it clean and it's all the corners are out. Now I'm going to take my brilliantizer pad, right, and I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to open it up. It's wet and I'm going to then move in a very del very deliberate motion up and back, up and back. I have a tendency to use the shortest distance of your flatbed to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Then we're going to open up our dry side and when we do that, again, we're going to go and wipe it out, okay? And I'll wipe it back and forth, back and forth. Now, I'll finally go through, and if you're doing this on your scanner, this is the perfect size. If you're using it on your photo scanner um, from the Kodak picture one, because this actually one wipe up and one wipe back actually cleans the imaging area, but if you're using one that is on your flatbed, you may want to get a, a bigger tip. And this is like a little carbon cleaning tip, and you actually just set it down on the glass, and you can bring it right across, and it will take out every single streak. Love it. The reason I keep this one is I'm really dependent on my glasses, so I use it on my glasses all the time. So great device, kind of simple easy to use. Once you've got it, now close the area or make sure that your area is clean. You want to make sure that you work on the inside out. The glass is the last thing you want to place. Okay, so inside is the last thing you want to deal. So we're working on the outside, the transport stuff, then we're going to work on the glass. Finally, we have the open imaging area. And the open imaging area brings some unique capabilities to the scanner, and it also brings a couple of challenges. First of all, it's the reason why we don't see streaks with the Kodak Picture Saver scanner. And the reason why is because particulate matter will get through, get lodged between the glass and the emulsion, and it becomes, if you remember your high school physics, the Roy G. Biv, right? It becomes a prism, and you start seeing streaks of red, green, or blue, typically. Now that works because what happens is as it moves across and there's some particulate matter or some dust or something, that white light breaks out. And as it breaks out, it's going to break out and pick out one of these primary colors, and it will leave the streak. Now that's on a closed glass covered imaging area. Because there is no glass, that won't happen on the Kodak Picture Saver scanner. However, because it is open, you have to keep the insides clean. And the way you can do that the most is just use your blower. Now, you'll notice when you open up your scanner inside, it says, no, they've got this little canister thing. It's got a big red no on it, and like, don't use air. That's not true. What that's saying is don't use compressed air. Using 
this kind of air, or even if you have like a, a, a blaster, rocket blaster, that you can puff in there, that type of air isn't going to hurt the scanner itself. Now, you can also vacuum. That will work. But we've had a lot more luck by blowing the air out rather than kind of sucking it in. So that just kind of works for us. You can try to vacuum as well. The other is you can take that card that we spoke about and you can place the microfiber cloth on the edge and you can literally just slip it down inside the imaging area and very gently run back and forth and back and forth and it'll help clean. There's a white balancing uh, sheet in there and there's the mirror optics down below so you can actually when you go back and forth clean any kind of dust that might have dropped down in there. Most of the time that will do it. But remember, if there's some sticky dust or something like that, that may be something that you're going to actually have to work with the manufacturer. And um, if you have a uh, warranty, you can get them replaced. If not, you can pay to have it uh, cleaned out. But again, we don't really run into that very often because what will happen is we're really diligent about using cleaning, both wiping out and as well as using the data vac to blow it out. And we blow between jobs, we blow between batches, we, we, that's, blowing is the best thing because if we've gotten all the sticky dust out, then any kind of dry dust is really all we're fighting and we can get that out very quickly. So now let's take our attention and look at one other tool and that's the transport cleaning sheet. And we shared with you a little bit about this at the beginning. The transport cleaning sheet is an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and it literally has a tacky on it that um, allows to stick. And you feed it in both one way and the other. Not going to work for your flatbed, right, because there's no feeding, but any kind of scanner, whether it's a document scanner or a photo scanner, this works awesome. And you'll want to feed it face up and you want to feed it face down because remember that dust it's, it doesn't care. It's going to be somewhere on that photograph front or back, not just on the front and not just on the back. So when you do that, what will happen is you'll start to see a pattern. And there's on the right-hand side of your screen is a perfectly clean scanner. We went through and cleaned the whole process, then we ran the transport cleaning sheet, and jazam, look, all of that dust and that stuff was still in there. And we ran it two or three or four times, both just, you just sit there and run it this way and then turn around and run it to face up, face down, face up, face down. Now, it cleans that out, gets any kind of things in those little valleys of those rollers all cleaned out and you're ready to go. You want to keep these sheets and use them frequently. Now, they can be, they're about a buck a piece, so what we do is we'll actually cut the edges off of them to make them into an eight and a, eight by eight and we'll then start feeding them this way. So when we're done, and this one is, even the one on the, the screen here, is perfectly clean as far as we're concerned. You can go and go and go until the tacky gets to a point where you, you know it's not picking up anymore. And then we'll cut the sides off, and we'll do it the other way until we have this big crisscross pattern. Works great. It's the best tool uh, around to keep that particulate matter out and help keep your pictures as clean as possible. We spoke a little bit about this separation module. This is important, and this is the document one, and you can see this little flap here. These actually, over time, friction will actually wear them down, okay? And that, again, particulate matter, it's a solid, it'll kind of chunk itself off, and you'll need to replace these, but you want to make sure that you keep those clean. That's that separation pad. Typically, we'll use them in the photo handling device, but more for the paper. And finally, you have to replace the rollers. Yes, every once in a while, these things wear down. Now, the, I actually have a client that had a, almost, they had 900 and something thousand scans on it, and they had never replaced the rollers. I had never seen a set of rollers that had no ridges on them before, but that's how worn down they were. These aren't expensive either. <laughs> They're like 50 bucks to get the whole set. Um, so you want to make sure that you uh, replace them. You want to probably, it depends on the type of material. I know for the Kodak Picture Saver Scanner, you're going to look at somewhere between uh, 175 to 225 
thousand images and then you can go ahead and replace them but if they look worn it's kind of like your tires if you got a 40,000 mile tire and you've got 25,000 miles on it, they look worn you know it's probably time to invest but then there's people that can get 50,000 miles out of their tires and that's per perfectly fine as well um, they're simple to do they actually just pick up lift off and slip onto a hub and they're very easy it's a job you can do yourself it takes about 10 or 15 minutes to do the whole thing so congratulations now besides the oil and the DOS and the particulate stuff we now have transport cleaning and open imaging areas ready to go so we've kind of checked off all of our areas that we we're going to talk about today. However, I've got just a couple of quick bonus tips for you. The first one is, and I'll reach around here, the first one is a dust cover. And the Kodak Picture Saver scanners come with one. Uh, if you don't have a Kodak scanner, then by all means, put the, find something to put this on. This is a, a very uh, thin, silky type of, of material that that forms around the machine and just is a is a protective barrier. If you're going to be transporting your Kodak picture saver scanner with that opening imaging area, or you're not going to be using it for a while, get yourself some painter's tape. Now we only recommend the 3M kind because we know the adhesive on the back is going to be an adhesive that doesn't stick on the machine. But take that and actually apply it over the opening imaging area. Do as I've done here and actually fold it over so there's no sticky and then the sticky is all down this way. And leave it out, conform it, and then close it and you're all set. You won't forget it and if you do forget it, you'll scan the first picture blue and you'll go, what's wrong with my pictures? And then you'll remember you haven't taken this off. But it stops any kind of material from getting inside just over time. And I know that you know this, but we're just going to say, remember that 40 pounds of dust? It has a way of creeping in all the time, even in places that you think are clean. So with a little bit of tape and a little dust cover, you can prevent a lot of things. Now, the last one is one that I, is my pet peeve around our office. It seems like we can have as much workspace ever as we want, and somebody just has to put a pack of pictures on it, a tub, or something on top of the flatbed. So around our office, we have these trays. They're the trays at the cafeteria, and we use them to actually handle our jobs and our work. So we, you'll see the message on the other side, right? And that's my message, and that's my handwriting. Now you can see we go to a great expense to uh, make sure that they're uh, well notified. But you know, just don't put anything on top of your scanner, right? Makes a lot of sense. But people don't think about it, and you can have all sorts of damage to that scanner, and you never even knew it because it was somebody that just put a potted plant there or whatever just because it looked like a nice little elevator off the countertop itself or they didn't have enough space, so they put it. So we keep that tray there, and then we can flip it over when we're actually going to be doing scanning and do the scanning part. So we've talked about the ambient and the work and the transport and the glass and the opening image area. We've got our five ways to keep our scanner and our scanning area clean and our scan looking great. So uh, I guess it's time for some questions. So we've got a few minutes, so I'll take a look real quick here and see. And we've got some questions here, so give me just a moment and I'll pull this out and see if we can address it. Okay, um, nastiest particulate in a box, glitter. We totally, totally agree. So the thing that you want to do is blow it off before you ever get it near your scanner. That will help you a lot. Um, number two, do I clean between each job? You betcha. We clean before the job, after the job, and if it's a big job, during the job. And the reason we do that is we always should walk up to every scanner in our office and it should be totally clean. We, that's, that, we should not leave the job unclean, right? the scanner unclean, even though the job is done. Because we don't want to leave it to the next person. But we then go ahead and repeat that. We also do that when, with our rentals. When we rent out, we will, we will um, actually 
scan and do a test, clean everything up, and then before we actually, and then set it on the shelf. We put the tape on it, put in a, a, a hermetically sealed kind of material that keeps it from any dust getting in, and we put it in this big waterproof case, and we put it on the shelf. But as soon as we get a rental and we're ready to rent, we'll pull it off, and we'll go through the whole process. It's really quick, but we'll just make absolutely sure that it's there. It says, uh, what type of brush do I use again? I use a camel hair brush, and you can buy them at an art store. You want to get one that has a very good neck on it so that the Fi the, the actual hair fibers are bound. And so when I go find a brush, you'll see me standing at the shop in wherever I'm at, whether it's like at a, a, an art store. I Typically, we mostly been getting them at Joann's lately. And I'll literally just take it and shake and pull on those hairs until I make sure that they're not going to come out in my hand. And if I do that, I feel pretty comfortable. The next is um, after so many scans. So how often do we scan? So I have a tendency to ask our team after about every 1,500 scans or so, that's usually an inch, inch and a half of pictures. I'll usually run a transport cleaning sheet. Um, once we've done a whole box of pictures, which could be anywhere between, uh, let's say 1,000 pictures is is uh, 100 pictures in an inch, so a, a shoebox is maybe 1,200 to 1,500 pictures. When we're all done with that, we'll go ahead and, besides running the, the um, transport cleaning sheet, and it's a good break for a batch or whatever, we'll open it up and we'll just clean the rollers. Again, we can take both of these kinds, put them in a plastic, a small little plastic bin, and this one's already starting to dry out a little bit, but it will stay a little plastic container baggy, and it will stay wet for us for a long time, so we get a lot of mileage out of them. Uh, Rick, should you really use the pre-separation pad in the photo scanning? It will have much greater potential for scratching the photos. Again, that is a great question, and the answer is no, we don't use this most of the time. Now, there have been some times where it has worked, and the reason I bring it up is because the way the scanner comes, it, it, you don't want to put the photo separation module on it. But we have seen where they have used certain kinds of proofs where the material is very heavy or it's, it needs to be hit just or separated just a little bit harder or it will, it will help you. Now, I, I then recommend for just standard photographs to pull that off. But we have on a number of occasions recommended they just go put insert that separation module and it seems to help because it doesn't hit it as hard. It's got twice the force, obviously. We showed you it has two springs on it. It's got twice the force when you're using the document scanner. So I and it doesn't have that special clutch. So we have a tendency to kind of say, well try putting this the, the photo module in there or the separation pad in there. And but remember to take it out when you're done. Um, somebody said thank you and we'll say thank you. It says, can you give us information on where to order the cleaning supplies? You can get our cleaning supplies on easyphotoscan.com under the Kodak area. And we have those. You can get brilliantizer pads out on the Amazon area. Um, uh, these transport cleaning sheets are golden. Uh, the cleaning pads, uh, we use them and they're fantastic as well. Um, but you can get all of these, you can find all these on our website. You can also find them um, out on Amazon. Uh, the other cleaning supplies, Home Depot for the tape, uh, Target for these uh, cloths. Uh, we buy on Amazon, we'll usually buy like 40 or 50 microfiber cloths. If you buy the Brilliantizer pads, they actually come with one, but it's a little smaller, so we kind of like the big ones. We do that. The blowers, we have these for sale. You'll also find them out on Amazon. There's out on Amazon, I think they're about 60 bucks. So I think that's most of it. Lens penses, you can find those as well. Um, lens pens, depending on the size of them, you're going to spend a few a few dollars on. Uh, camel hair brushes, we have a tendency to get those down at, uh, I think, Joann's. And um, they're not cheap. Uh, I'll usually spend about $20 on a camel hair brush, just to let you know. All right, so um, can you give us information? Do you, do you perform blowing off larger uh, particles? of slides. Absolutely. We have a slide presentation that we had done and we strongly recommend you take a look at that. Our blower is our best friend and we actually blow them in the tray with 
blown with the ring on, you'll only not blow them with the ring one time. And then you're doing 80 slide pickup. But blow them with the ring, and this is a fantastic tool. It takes all the dry dust off of them and really can work a number. And that's mostly what you'll find on slides. If they've been in a box and been, been kind of just stuck in a closet, mostly it'll be dry dust that you'll find on here. How do you clean the backs of album photos with dry particulate? Okay. We don't. We learned this lesson a long time ago. By the time you try to clean the backslides, you're just all messed up. So what we do is, we actually, when they're really sticky, we have post-it notes we use on the back side. We cut them to the size of the photograph. You can get the big one. We use the back side and let it stick to the post-it note paper. And then we just send it through. You know, our scanner, the, the Kodak Picture Saver scanner, actually will allow you to do that and will handle it perfectly fine. Uh, other scanners you have to use a separation device and open up the throttle and that type of thing or else it thinks you're feeding two things through. But the Kodak Picture Saver scans were great. So we'll just take, and we actually, most of the time, we keep the three by threes and where the glue is really kind of nasty, we'll just slap it on the back side and stick it through. It's perfect. And then you can recycle them over and over again. So I hope that tip works for you there. Um, and then um, let's see here. What do you use to clean the rollers? You want to clean the rollers with a cleaning pad. This has a little um, uh, non-ionic solution on it and uh, something that, that will cut down um, the, the uh, grit a little bit that can get down in the rollers. If you don't use this, then use something that isn't, gonna sh isn't going to uh, shred lint and stuff and use plain water. Um, don't use anything with alcohol. It will prematurely dry those rollers out. And those, those ridges are so fine down in there. And you don't want to dry them out and cause them to crack, OK? And somebody loved the sticky tip thing and how to clean the stuff off the front of the scanner. Uh, let's see, how to clean stuff off the front of a photo before scanning it through. OK, so there's a couple of ways to deal with photos that are dirty on the front. Um, one is you can use pec, the PEC cleaning stuff. Uh, we don't really do that. You could. It's just going to be an extra charge, right? I mean, it, it's fairly expensive, and it's a, all a manual process. You can do that. Um, we have a tendency, when we're doing our pictures, this becomes our, uh, with their kind of nasty fronts, this becomes our best friend. We have like three or four of them, and we'll line them all out there. And we'll actually then just kind of very gently bring the picture across, I guess I'm not in view here, but we'll bring the picture across very gently, assuming that that's not going to scratch the emulsion. So we'll test it on one or two to make sure we're not going to scratch the emulsion on it. But that's how we'll clean the front sides of them. Um, you'll be surprised how if it's just kind of dry stuff, it'll come off. If it's wet or sticky dust or if it's particulate matter that, that has kind of gotten stuck on there, um, you're going to kind of have to work with it. PEC pads is probably the best way to go. That's PEC, PEC pads and the PEC cleaning solution. Uh, somebody said, thanks for the post-it note tip. Just to be clear, there's no glass within the open or, gla or closed imaging areas. So just to be clear, there's no glass within the open or closed imaging. So let's go back and hopefully I explain this correctly. There is glass on the closed imaging area. The closed imaging area on the back side, on the base of that scanner, there is a glass covering. All of the optics, all of the, the light and the CCD, and all of that that are up underneath there, they're, they're contained within a vacuum seal. Those are actually put together in a, in a um, sterile environment and sterile room. Okay, And those are sealed, and typically they will remain sealed, and you won't get any dust in there. Now, every once in a while, on any scanner, no matter what, we've seen this on all sorts of manufacturers, that seal will break just a little bit, and you'll get dust up underneath there, and then you'll start seeing dust particles. The open imaging area has no glass on it. That's on the clamshell part. And then down inside is the optic component, where you've got your light sources, you've got your uh, mirrors, and your CCDs. So hopefully I'm clear on that and um, didn't, didn't uh, mess anybody up uh, with regards to that. All right. So let's see here. I think there's no more questions. 
Um, we want to say thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to be with you. We're going to have this as a recording. You'll get a chance to uh, take a look at this at your leisure if you need to. If you're going to be at the APO conference in a, just another week and a half or so, two weeks, we're looking forward to seeing you there. But if you have a question, please do not hesitate to call us. Our telephone number is 1-866-562-4660, or you can reach us at info at easyphotoscan.com. So thank you so much for the opportunity today. If you have any other questions, please feel free to drop them to us, and we'll look forward to answering them for you, whether they're about cleaning or anything else about scanning your photos.